Disappointed actually in our first half in terms of our of, of our effort. I didn't think we guarded the ball very well, um, and then uh, the second half I thought we became more active. And, and after the first three or four minutes, where Keith where Kane was posting a lot, I thought we really settled in and did a nice job defensively taking some things away. Uh, Kipper Nichols uh, sliding over Garden King was disruptive. I did a nice job. We made a nice. Uh, uh, advantageous change um, in, in matchups there and uh, uh, I thought it was very very important in that game going back that, that the lead their lead stayed at five or six it never got to 10 or 12 and as you know playing Wisconsin you get you get those leads and and uh, might as well be 25 sometimes but uh, uh, great execution down the stretch um, we, we uh, Io had three great, great assists that led to nine points. Along with that, he had a uh, what we call a skip layup, uh, just froze a defender, and then of course the step back. So, you know, Io was responsible for for 14 points, but it was it was the right plays, and it was uh, guys stepping up and making shots. And then uh, Georgie down the stretch, uh, a big time defensive play without fouling. Uh, we call those Mozgovs. Uh, they're just walling up and and uh, making a defender shoot it over him. And uh, then Allen did a did a terrific job of snatching the the, the last rebound. So uh, you know, it's all you can ask for on the road is to, to have an opportunity to win the game in the last four minutes. And, and uh, we stepped up and made uh, made a few plays. But uh, that one's behind us. And and uh, as so happens when you're when you're in conference play in 20 games, it's. Uh, uh, and you're in the Big Ten. Uh, it's another great, great opponent. Uh, Rutgers is probably playing as well as anybody in our conference. Uh, they're as deep as anybody in our co our conference. They're tremendous experience. Um, I think Miles Johnson is one of the most improved players in our league uh, from his freshman year to his sophomore campaign. Uh, they're physical. They're an extremely good rebounding team, and uh, they cause matchup problems um, with with Harper playing. Uh, a lot at the four spot, so uh, it's it's a team that is uh, uh, came in here and they're going to play extremely hard. It was an overtime game last year, a game where Georgie um, was was exceptional and took every one of those points. So I expect a a, a little different game in terms of style of play. Uh, they're about a third of their points come in transition under ten seconds, uh, and, and Jacob Young is is elite in transition. Uh, so we've got to be good there, and then uh, you know it, it's it's a it's a scrum once it goes up on the glass. So it's two top ten rebounding teams, and we're going to have to uh, uh, we're going to have to do battle there. What challenges Rutgers may present where you may outside of Johnson? They've just got a bunch of guys that are six four to six seven and seem like kind of interchangeable. Well, they got very big guards. Obviously, Caleb McConnell. McConnell's another guy that had a big game against us last year uh, in six five six six at the point. Uh, they've got a young kid uh, Mulcahy that is uh, uh, as a freshman six five six six plays the point, and uh, you know so they can create some some disadvantages from a size standpoint uh, with that. They're they're an extremely handsy team uh, with that length and size on the defensive side, so they use it to their advantage. You know, and then Harper's a guy that, you know, 245, 250 pounds, that, that is very skilled, can shoot the three, can put it on the floor. Uh, they're now putting him in a lot of ball screens. So they, they can cause you some mismatch problems because they're basically positionless one through four. Brad, not having that letdown in Madison after a good win against Purdue, is that a sign of maturity and growth? And how do you keep that going? 
Well, I think it's it's you talk about momentum. You want to build momentum. You don't want to become satisfied. The, the 20, 20 games is a is a is a is a long season, and, and uh, you want to take every game uh, for for its face value. It's the next game on the schedule, so it's the most important game. And, and uh, uh, yeah, it was a great road win. It, it was it was. It was big for our fans to get that kind of monkey off our back, but for our players, it was it was a great road win in conference play. And now, you know, you've got to build on that by uh, by coming home and and again facing Rutgers. There's no easy ones, so uh, you know it's um, it's it's kind of the the, the most important game is the next one, and, and hopefully we're we're uh, as good as we as good as we can be because we'll have to be. Greg, what can you say about pace for tomorrow? Obviously, Wisconsin's a team that really wants to slow the game down. Rutgers seems a little bit more frenetic. Um, is it important for you to have a certain type of pace tomorrow? Well, I think we we always like to play fast uh, when it, when it's opportunistic. I think it's it becomes a game about about field goal attempts, um, and I mean that in terms of offensive glass and and limiting them to one shot and us creating opportunities. Uh, and then uh, you, you've got to avoid turnovers. And uh, the live ball turnovers, they punish you uh, with live ball turnovers. And, and uh, so, you know, I expect it to be a little different pace, obviously, than the last two. But, um, you know, it's something that, that we practice and we work on as well. On the theme of turnovers, has the coaching staff done anything to, to hone the high-low between uh, Kipper and Georgie to Kofi? Yeah, I, you know, I think we we're, we're, we haven't done it as much. You know, it's it's. Uh, uh, I don't want to say that we we taken that out, but uh, you know, we start when teams don't guard those guys up there. You know, we turn it into a lot of naked uh, screening actions, quick reversals. Um, you know, we had two or three opportunities against uh, uh, Wisconsin, but um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 about making the right the right passes and not every time. Everybody's looking for road wins in this league. They're hard to get. Is there an emphasis in the locker room on trying to make this a place where you, you can't get one? Yeah, I mean, we want it to be that 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 kind of place. You know, we want it to be that kind of environment. And, and there's you know there's no letdowns. And, and you know we we talk about in the off season, Eric. I mean, every game is going to be you know a two or three possession game at, at the end. And, and uh, uh, you know, you've got to be able to execute. You've got to be tough, and and you've got to be able to, to withstand those. And uh, the environment helps. The culture helps. The fans help. We got great fans, and we put a lot of a lot of people in this arena every night. And, and uh, there's no doubt that it, it energizes our guys. Um, so you know, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to have everybody tomorrow. Brad, the, the players say there's a confidence about this team right now. For you guys as a coaching staff, outside of them just telling you they're confident, how, how can you breed a confidence about them on the floor with their play? Well, I think you gain that from a game like the Wisconsin game. I think you you know you gain you gain some confidence when you beat a Purdue team because you know they're top ten in the country defensively. You you gain some confidence when you execute down the stretch and make many plays and and uh, you know it's it's. Uh, uh, the, c the consistency that comes from practice and stressing them in practice so that when they get in the games they can make those uh, have the confidence to go make those plays and and uh, you know whether it's Trent's three or Allen's threes or you know it's just a uh, uh, experience helps there but yeah I think we're there's no doubt we're playing with with more confidence but you're only as good as your effort and, and we have to be uh, our effort will lead to that confidence because he had to sit for so long and kind of got up and down because of foul trouble rhythm was, uh, how hard is it to do what Allen did late and make those shots? And in your experience, he has said it's not very hard. Trent has said this year it's not very hard. In your experience, how hard is that? I was an okay shooter. He, it's hard. And it, it's, it's, it's challenging. Now, he, he got to play enough in the second half. But, again, when you don't find a rhythm early, uh, it becomes more of the mental piece. And Allen's really good at handling that. Um, you know, nothing nothing bother, bothers Allen too much one way or the other. Uh, he's a pretty tough kid and, and tough-minded, and, and uh, but uh, yeah, he just he just plays, man. And that's one thing. It's one possession to the next with Allen, and, and and I love that about him. Could he have done that last year, or was, or was I probably wouldn't put him in that position last year. Um, you know, he he, he, had, he didn't deserve it then. 
uh, his confidence. He's, he's, he's earned the right to, to have that, and, and you have to earn that right with consistency and work. And that's why I say it's about he's the greatest example of having to go through a process uh, to become successful, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's the important part of, 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 of they come here as boys growing into a, a, a man and becoming a, a really good player. Is you got to deal with some, some hiccups. And, and some speed bumps, and Allen dealt with that, and now he's he's matured, and he's he never got his daughter down. He's just kept he's just kept to the grindstone, and, and now we're starting to see that guy, and uh, it's exciting. The success you had at Iowa off the ball screen late. I know it's you've run ball screen before, but was that a growth point or a step forward uh, with that particular look offensively? Yeah, I mean it's it's you know we we do four or five different things with Iowa off ball screens and, and that one happened to be semi successful in that in that game when there was three or four plays. Um, actually we ran out of that, you know, trying to confuse tags and and do some different things, but uh, uh, made the right passes at the right time. And and that's what good players do. It's never just about them. It's always about the the, the play and making the right play and, and, and I don't make the right play on every one of those. 11 a.m. is a pretty early start time. How does that affect your pregame routine, and does it present any challenges? Uh, it's different. Uh, we don't have a full-blown shoot-around at that time. You know, otherwise we'd be we pregame four hours before, uh, but we will be up and we'll be on the court with a walkthrough, and then guys can shoot. Uh, I call it deadheading. We won't deadhead into a, just a, this game. Show up before the game of play. Uh, we get them up and moving, so that routine stays the same. But the on-the-court stuff will, will be just a little bit different. Coach, Luke Henson's 88th birthday today. We reached out to him. Do you plan to uh, any message to him? Oh, absolutely. Had had lunch with with Coach yesterday. Um, you know, if there's if there's the epitome of a tough guy, uh, it's Coach. And uh, you know, he, he was he was great yesterday, and and a group of us had a great lunch. And and uh, you know, of course, with with Coach, all you want, all he's going to talk about is ball and and, and officiating. So uh, you know, we got uh, we got to have a nice conversation and, and uh, you know I hope I'm as fortunate to be 88 and, and uh, as sharp and as, as, as mentally tough as he is. So one of Kofi or Georgie in the last few games has dealt with you know two fouls in the first half. I mean just one is that a uh, point of concern and two I mean how do you feel like maybe this team has figured out how to get through the situation? Yeah Kipper Nichols. Kipper Nichols. Kipper's been great. Kipper, Kipper's been great. I That was the one thing that I was Really, uh, really pleased with in the Wisconsin game was we managed the first half and we had to throw some different looks. Demonte played some, we played small ball a little bit with Demonte at the four. Jermaine gave us a couple of minutes, and, and all you're trying to do is buy minutes. And and uh, uh, the lead never, never really changed. We kept it right there, guys. You know, you run different sets or do a few different things to, to emphasize uh, uh, maybe the lineup you have, but. Uh, you know, fouls happen, and, and uh, you know we got to make those adjustments every game. And we sure don't want it to be habit, but it, it's uh, it's going to happen sometimes. And Kip's been great, uh, especially on the defensive end. Kind of follow up, following up on the concept of the next game is the most important game. I'm wondering if you watched Michigan and Purdue last night, or if that's just what Jeff and Jamal do. I do not. I will watch scores, and and I was saying in here, I it's one of the hardest things for me to do as a, is. I watch four or five games of every opponent, and uh, I love our conference. I love our league. It's the best in the country. But just watching them, it's, that's not entertainment for me. Um, so I, I don't, and I'll follow a score. But uh, watching games, I don't. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Brad is deadheading a floral reference or a musical reference. I don't know. <laughs> how, do you, how do you want to use that? Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a, I don't know, something I came up with, I don't know.